welcome into NMN Plus episode 75. My name is Alex Light with Spark Through. Hope you're having an incredible day today. Whatever day you are listening or perhaps watching this podcast over at our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Spark Three. Give us a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, be a friend, tell a friend. Uh, join with me as always. I got Zach here in the studio. Zach, how you doing? How you feeling? I'm doing good. I'm ready to go. I actually quite like this week. This week was nice. Of uh, like what? Just the content and everything? Uh, anime, mostly. It, well, so, well, some of the chapters. Well, we some chapters last week were awesome. So yeah, you know, we got to have a little bit of a down week. But no, there were some solid chapters. No, anime was pretty solid. Summertime was really good. Uh, Shield Hero wasn't bad. I enjoyed Shield Hero. Uh, Spy Family was good. Tomodachi was very good. Yes. Yes. I'm looking forward to chatting about that. And then I guess we'll see how Meme Quest and Skeleton Knight was for you. We'll get into that here in a little bit. Uh, first and foremost, just a little friendly heads up. Uh, this show will be on a break next week uh, because we have a very busy schedule with Game Static. Yes. Because uh, next week, uh, this is our Super Bowl season right now for Game Static. We had a state of play today when we were recording. For, that was pretty dope. Going to be chatting about that this weekend. Uh, next week, like basically for the Game Static lineup, if you're a gamer and you haven't checked out Game Static, check out Game Static because like for this next week or so, we're pumping out episodes. We've got an episode coming out specifically for Summer Game Fest kickoff. Uh, an episode after that talking about Mario Struggles Battle League, the Quarry. Uh, then we're going to have an ex- episode for Xbox Bethesda show, Nintendo Direct show. Dude, we're episodes after episodes. At least those four lined up. Who knows? Maybe more. Who knows? Depends on what else comes out. You know yeah. what I mean? This is the period where we're just like, whatever happens, we're putting out an episode. So it's going to be a busy time. So no Animan Plus next week. We'll fall back up the next week and have a great time there. And you could check us out on our website, sparky3.com. You can sign up for free or you can sign up five bucks a month to get early access to podcast episodes and more. Uh, and then lastly, go follow us over at Twitter at Animan Podcast. We definitely appreciate that. Uh, with that said, let's go ahead and jump into stuff. Or you got anything on your mind? Anything we want to chat about first? Uh, I mean, I don't really got anything too specific other than. Shout out Josh Body Pillow. I mean, yeah, right there in the <laughs> yep, corner. Yep. Yeah, shout out Josh Body Pillow. Wherever my camera shot us. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah. I will say uh, Tagashi has uh, really been on one recently. He's really been milking that Twitter. Oh yeah, yeah. Every day, posting like a different shot with a with a different you know page number, or whatever down at the bottom. He's milking the shit out of that right because now because we won't see anything again for another decade. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Four hundred hundred fans. Oh, here, let me ask you a question. What's up? Something I saw earlier, and I thought was kind of an interesting thing. You know, uh, you know, who would be, in your opinion, the six founding members? Of like a anime Avengers because I saw this on Twitter earlier and it kind of brought up some controversy because of two of the picks, okay. mostly one of those picks because okay. it had like you know the four that you would naturally assume it had Goku, Naruto, Luffy, Ichigo, and then the other two that were just like ah, I would maybe take these out would be the other two they had was Saitama and Aaron Yeager. That was the big one that brought up a lot of controversy. I'm curious who would be your founding six Avengers, you know, because they're you know, I think I don't. Or I'm trying to remember because I uh, who I'm trying to remember how many of founding uh, Avengers there were in the comics. I want to say it might have been five, mm-hmm. could have been six. Obviously, the movies it was six. Yeah, you know, for the MCU, but I, I don't know if it was six in the comics. I'm trying. I, you know, I know for the founding six in the movies, that's actually not the original founding six. Correct. Because like Captain America didn't come to like fucking years later, IRL mm-hmm. time. But who would be your uh, six? Marvel, uh, not Marvel, anime Avengers, the founding team, essentially. I mean, I would keep those four, and I guess yeah. it would depend on what era we're going to looking at. Because if we were looking at current era, I think Saitama and Aaron would be okay for that. Right. If we're looking back to when probably you and me started watching anime, I probably would lean more towards like... Um, okay, I'm sort of... I'm sort of iffy on that one now that I've said it. So I would personally put a female character in it. I would, I would too. I would put either Kagome or um, I forget her name, Sailor Moon. Yeah, I would do Sailor Moon is who I would do. Sailor Moon. And then for my sixth one for that time, at least for me personally, probably Yusuke. See, that was mine too. Like I had it between three characters, maybe four. And mm-hmm. mine were uh, gone. Okay. Uh, Yusuke, Sailor Moon, and Edward. Those were the four where I was just like, 
that's who I would kind of supplement in those last two slots yeah. because I would view it as like error. I, I would like where it's like, you know, your founding team be like the prominent series, like back then, like in the, you know, late nineties, the like kind of mid two thousands, like yes. focus on that as your founding team that, you know, if we were doing like an anime Avengers, so that, those would be kind of the four that I would debate between. So with that said, it'd probably be like a Yusuke and a, uh, like a sailor moon sort of vibe. Yeah. And then the immediate like next follow, up team member would probably be like gone for good because i feel like almost for if we were going for current era with like jaeger and a saitama in it i almost would possibly leave off ichigo just because that's fair because bleach has actually been off for a while yeah yeah and i would actually probably look at maybe putting actually like a um jojo Ooh, one of one of the jojos okay yeah i would soon Joseph, but I mean, everyone has their pick of Joe star. So one of the Joe stars in there. That's a fair one. That's a fair one. And if we really want to dial back, you'd want to put Saint Seiya in there. If we really want to dive, I mean, dial if back. we want to dial back, yeah, probably yeah. with that initial group, I would probably take out, um, or even Kenshin, you know? Yeah. Kenshin. Yeah. Cause yeah, if we really want to dive, I mean, we could really dive in. Yeah. This. <laughs> this is a big thing here <laughs> because if we want to look at an arrow, cause like, if we want to go back like nineties, you would probably actually look at wanting to do like, um, uh, Goku, yeah. Naruto. Um, well, Naruto was like early 2000s. You're right. So yeah, I should so, probably leave off Naruto. Yeah, so I'd be like Goku. Luffy. Luffy's debatable because that's late 90s. Was he? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so that, probably Goku, like probably still Joe Star because Joe Star's been yeah, around for yeah, a long yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, true, true. Kenichi. Um, fucking who else did you just say who I can't think Kenshin, of? Kenshin. And Saint Seiya. Saint Seiya, yeah. yeah and then Yusuke and Sailor Moon, you know. Something like that. Yeah, there's tons of stuff there. The, yeah. Um, another one that I saw trending, and I, it's always funny to see, like, a character trending, like, literally, like, top 10, top 15 in the United States for just a dumb fucking question. Yeah. When I say dumb, I don't mean, like, the question itself. Like, oh, it's, it's who would fucking ask that? I mean, just like it's just like someone posing a random-ass question. All of a sudden, they're one of the top trending things in the United States of fucking America. Correct. But one that I saw earlier was, uh, who would win in a fight? Okay. Martial arts fight. Both humans, no powers. Okay. Naruto or Goku? Because, like, people, like, people kind of sleep on that, like, as, you know, Hokage Naruto, he's one of the best taijutsu users in the Naruto world. Like, even, or even as, like, you know, Naruto from, like, shipping towards the end and stuff, he's still one of the better taijutsu. He's not, like, a Rock Lee level. No. But, like, even in, like, you know, Hokage Naruto, Hokage Naruto, like, like his Taijutsu skills are like up there with like Rock Lee and stuff. He's one of the better Taijutsu users in the world and one of the best Taijutsu users of all. He's the best out of all the all the Kages of that era. So I don't think I could effectively answer that because I don't. It's a tough one because I don't know exactly because I never paid a whole enough attention to DBZ of exactly what all kinds of training Goku has done. It do, you do, it'd really be dialing it back to Dragon Ball. That's where people. That's gotta, what yeah. I'm thinking. Cause yeah, that's what you gotta Z look at. mostly focuses on them using their superpowers, basically. Key blasts <laughs> yeah. and whatnot. And they have the clashes in the air where they're fisting each other. But right. It's just a matter of. And then the hyperbolic chamber, him always working that about how much tons is. How much yeah, gravity yeah. is he under and things like that. I will, I, I will say that I still think it's Goku. Okay. You know, watching every piece of Dragon Ball content that's ever come out. Mm hmm. I still think it's Goku, but I I just from everything that I was reading from those comments, I think people are sleeping on Naruto. I don't think it's going to be as close as people think. Like if we're talking, because you, I, I did see one thing that I didn't even think about when I mentally answered this question, and when I was reading some comments, just someone pointed out, "Hey guys, like yeah, Goku is like a really smart fighter and stuff like that, and blah blah." But you also have to keep in mind this post literally says both of them are humans. A lot of Goku's ability, like powers, come from the fact that he's a Saiyan. That's why he's always been ahead of the rest. And I'm like, that's a good point, you know. So I mean, like, I think people are sleeping on Naruto in this, but I still think it's gonna be Goku. But I think people are sleeping on Naruto. I'm not gonna lie. Nar Nar Possibly. Naruto's a pretty solid Tajutsu user. I mean, the other weird Twitter thing this week was involved with Spy Family, which you sent me with your. <laughs> Oh yeah, and China's, oh my god, and China's fuck up. Oh yeah, dude, they always be doing shit like that. Yeah, from the uh, was it last week's episode? No, this week's episode. Oh, this week's episode. Okay, so this week's episode, at least the one we're going to be talking about. Yeah, yeah, uh, they had a pretty and a censoring moment of blood, right? Where yours like covered in blood and yep. came, coming to the door, and they censored that in China where they just colored it white. So it looks like she just got com blasted. 
<laughs> they just covered like a Jesus four, Christ. 13, 14 year old your yep. so. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Like, yo, that 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 side by side shot. It's just like China, uh, what China. were what were you doing? Think I like I understand you want to censor stuff, but like you I mean four kids censored stuff better than that. <laughs> And it's worse because that scene's not just a short scene. It's a whole thing where yeah. they're having a whole dialogue. And yes. She, like the script shot you sent me is just showing her face, but it's blood all yes. on her body. Then there's even another shot when they're like a couple years older and she's still covered in blood. Yes. So like, come on, man. Four kids censored shit better than that. You know, like I was like, if you really wanted to censor it, I figured they would just kind of like do what like four kids would have done in that situation and like completely like took the time to eliminate the blood and maybe cover it with like a bunch of like, uh, like, like black mark to represent scratches, you know, like that's the kind of stuff. Four China kids doesn't have that time. Yeah. They don't, have, they're just like, just color white. Yeah. You know, no one's going to care. It'll be fine. <laughs> it's like, it's going to look great. No, it did not look great. Uh, anyway, let's hop into some anime chat. Uh, I'll kick things off with summertime rendering. Uh, very good episode. Very good episode. Really enjoyed this one. Uh, a lot of, a lot of, um, questions unanswered. A lot of questions answered and more questions came up. Okay. Yeah. A bit of both. A bit of both. Because this episode was a massive, like, focus on uh, Hizuru, uh, the, the big titty chick, as okay. she is defined in the show. I'm not personally naming her that. Um, it big focus on her and fighting some of the shadows, most notably the shadows of like the little girl and the parents, you know, keep in mind her and that mother of that girl, they were childhood friends, yes. whatever, you know? So it was one of those things where it's like, you know, kind of, you know, they, they, there's a lot of conversation dialogue at the beginning where it's like kind of establishing, okay, Shinpei's a time traveler. Okay. You know, this happened. Okay. This happened. He's kind of relaying information to her. Let's just like, you know, on the 25th or 26th when everyone died the little girl was there so his was just like okay so that tells me that when i go to fuck them up the little girl gets away somehow we need to figure out how and why the little girl got away because she was there on that day right uh and then other than that you know before we actually get to that point you see shinpei just like attempting to recreate every steps from the original day so it's like that way he can easily keep track of stuff and whenever he has to do another loop nothing kind of changes. You know yeah. what I mean? So it's just little stuff. Like, you know, he comes in, you know, Noah's trying to cook. He says, don't worry, I'll cook. Because he cooked originally when he first got there, when all this started. So he's trying to mimic everything that he's done in the very first loop so that way he can just mentally track it better. Makes sense, right? Yeah. Uh, so then we have the moment where um, Hizuru is going to go fuck these shadows up. But this is where it gets, like, some questions answered and more questions arise where it's involving her as a character and her backstory. Because, you know, I, I mentioned to you that um, she had, she went by another name when we got introduced to the yes. character. Uh, and his is like her actual name. Well, the name of the character that she was going by was actually her twin brother that w- was killed by shadows. Okay. Uh, whenever she, before, this is before she ever left the island, right? So, okay, a little bit of a backstory, you know, question answered there, uh, as well as, the, the question of how she's able to fight Shadow so easily is also answered. But then there's also the question, the new questions arise. like, how the fuck did that even happen? Because like when, uh, you know, she's getting ready to like go in, right? Like you see her outside the house of the, the little girls, you know, and their family. She's on the phone and you hear her say, okay, I got it, sis. Sis is what she says. Okay. Goes up, whatever, and, you know, Shinpei and the old the old man, I forgot his name, you know, they're kind of off the side, and Shinpei kind of points out, it's just like, you know, hey, I've kind of got a theory about her. Does she have, like, dual personalities or something? And he's just like, no, not quite. So, essentially, what this is, is, like, when it comes to the fighting the shadows, somehow, some way, again, this wasn't fully answered, and I'm just, obviously, I'm assuming it will, you know, this is a pretty long series here, uh, her brother, essentially, is w- inside of her, that, like, his shadow, is inside of her. Okay. So they basically kind of like, uh, almost like a, a Yugi and Adam sort of thing, and they sw- switch fucking places, whatever. It's kind of like that. So when it comes to fucking up shadows, he's the one in place in her body fucking up shadows. So you got you got the question answered of how she's so good and how knowledgeable she is at shadows, but now you got other questions of how the fuck that even happened. You know what I mean? Because like even in this fight, whatever, when she goes up there and... So wait, she has his shadow, but not him? See that that's what I, that's where I kind of got a little unclear on the episode as well. I, okay. I'm a, I'm gonna probably actually rewatch that episode later tonight or tomorrow, just so I can see if there's something I missed. I don't think there was, but because I, I I felt like it was like 
one of those situations of where it tells you, hey, this is a thing, but we're not giving you more details yet. It was kind of one of those vibes. You know okay. what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, again, this is like a 24-episode series. So I fully expect yeah. this to be expanded on, but I don't feel like it really kind of dove into, like, which one it is. It's it, But he is inside of her because, like, you know, like I said, he even said, I got it, sis, because he was listening to a recording of her, you know, whenever they were making this big plan. And then even, you know, in the fight, he goes in there, you know, and or her, whatever. Uh, you know, he immediately fucks up the mom shadow, sledgehammer to the ground, fucks him up quick, fucks the dad up quick. Uh, he makes contact with the little girl shadow, but doesn't actually kill her. And that kind of made him a look. He's just like, huh, I know I made contact with that shadow. But whenever you see him make contact, like you see that piece of the shadow that got hit by the hammer kind of like break away. And like she could basically kind of get injured. So he's just like, all right, so this shadow's different somehow whatever and but like even in this fight like that shadow at one point was like strangling you know um you know his or his body whatever and yeah. you know to try to get him off like he even like st- stabbed you know himself whenever he was getting up he even said sorry sis i didn't mean to hurt your body there you know you know so it, it's a weird dynamic there. okay but i'm assuming it will be fully explained maybe even in the next episode you know um you know, in well, you know, once the shadow kind of gets away, runs upstairs, whatever, which, you know, keep in mind for the little girl running upstairs, it kind of goes back to the very first, like the very second episode when Shimpei was in this building. He saw like the black marks, whatever, on the yeah. floor, and he went upstairs, and it was like that real eerie moment, and the flash happened in the background. So, this is where it all kind of comes in. There's like come, kind of coming full circle now where they're trying to figure out how did that little girl get away. That's where we're at on, on this loop. Okay. So, it kind of goes up into the, you know, to the upstairs, whatever, kind of just walking around, trying to figure things out. You know, goes into her room. He kind of sits down. You see the little girl in the hallway behind me, and he, he fucking knows me. He's just like, yeah, go ahead and flash. Go for it. Not even turning around. He's just like, I know if you flash me right now and try to turn me into a shadow, that's like a weak moment for you, and it takes a few seconds. And you, if you really think that I'm not going to fucking strike in those few seconds, you're out of your mind. You're going to die if you try to flash me right now. Go ahead. Try to make a shadow of me. Go for it. Try it. And is there's, it Shimpe? No, this is this is um okay. This is the brother. I just want to make sure. Yeah, no, this is the brother. Yeah, yeah. He, he's he's calling this he's calling this little girl out like, yo, fucking try it. You know, you you had because yeah, that apparently when they do that flash, like he's saying, there's a quick moment, that quick little hesitation where it's like it, it just really drains the shit out of him. Is the way that he put it. Uh, the little girl kind of you know you see her kind of get angry and she's just like fuck this and just kind of tries to go out the window, whatever. Uh, all of this being part of Plan B. Which then involves like the uh, uh, the old man uh, outside and Shinpei having nail guns, and as she's trying to escape, they're just trying to shoot the shadow and try to pin her down. They do end up succeeding in that, and you know, you know, the shadow tries to like basically tries to kind of fuck with Shinpei's head, you know, because uh, the shadow openly says like, "Oh yeah, Ushiro, yeah, I fucking rang her neck until she wasn't breathing anymore, like fully just kind of fucking with him, that kind of thing, whatever." Gotcha. Yeah, and then, um, you know, uh, the brother ended up dealing the final blow, whatever. Kind of done there. But, yeah, we get back to the house. Shinpei's cooking, like, that meal, whatever. And, and then blood. No, well, well, there was, a, <laughs> there was a quick moment of, oh, no, whenever he got home because it was, like, Noah with a knife, and there was some blood on the knife, and it was, like, super, like, creepy vibe, and he thought it was Noah as a shadow. But it was just a tea. They were, she was just trying to cook, and she's bad at cooking, and she, like, cut herself on every finger. And she's not a shadow because, like, he did the foot shadow thing, whatever. Yeah, it, but it, it teased you there for a second that that was, you know, there was there was a potential bad situation. All right. And then the episode ends in just a very kind of a, a quick little funny manner where it's like he's sitting there replaying everything in his head. It's like, okay, what do I need to do next? Blah, blah. He's like, okay, you know, cutting these onions. Yeah, I can salvage everything, you know, because Noah's not a good cook. So he's trying to salvage what she was attempting to do. And then all of a sudden, you know, you know, I think Noah said in the back or something, like, oh, that smells good, whatever, blah, blah. And then all of a sudden you just see it. Ushiro, the shadow, just like up on uh, Yuchi, or Shinpei, sorry. It's just like, yeah, it does smell pretty good. <laughs> That's how the episode ends. All righty. Uh, no, a solid episode. The action was really good. And the music was really, really solid in this episode, too. I really hope you watch this show at some, oh, point. some point. I really, really hope you do because it is, it is it is very very solid. Uh, we want to hop over to Shield Hero. Yeah, episode nine, almost done with this season. I think it ends on twelve or thirteen. Big, I believe so. Big sad there. Uh, big sad there, but big happy here because we got a reunion with one of our characters. That is, being Philo. Yes. You know, pretty solid episode there. I I I completely forgot how fucked up it was the situation Philo was in 
in in in this basically being like a a little slave to be put on for like a little circus, whatever. Correct. Yeah, I completely forgot how fucked up that was. I mean, it's sort of standard for this series. It is, yeah. Because I mean, it's sort of we're at this interesting moment where now Fume in the other world was being finally being praised and whatnot. Now he's in this other world, and we have this moment whenever they get to the palace or whatever of the kingdom that's allied with uh, uh, Kasana. Mm -hmm. Um, And she tells him, oh, he's a cardinal hero from another world and everyone gives him those looks again. And he's immediately like, fuck all of y'all. Yeah, basically, like you you have that moment where he's just like, here we fucking go again. He just turns away. He's like, fuck this. And Which is also a nice moment because at the end before coming to this world, we had that moment where he had no rage and couldn't use the yeah. shield of vengeance and now in this episode we're slowly getting scenes of that um shield of vengeance shield of wrath wrath yeah, yeah yeah popping back up yep and him possibly having to using it again so we'll see where that goes yeah because he almost flipped his shit when he found philo like yeah. that shield came busting out pure flames he almost flipped his shit right then and there he was going to murder people. Although I do like the shield that he used whenever they rescued Philo. I do love just like how yeah, the, how quick it was. Yeah, the spirit shield, I think it is. Yeah, that was that was solid because it's like the dude sitting there talking shit, you know, uh, you know, you see now Fumi just stand up, just turn around <laughs> with that shield on and just stares at the dude and it just lets out the whale and just like traps him in like this mental prison. I'm just like, ah, oh, that's a cold fucking move, dude. I mean and um Risha even says that I'm pretty sure his mind was broken after that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you absolutely broke him. <laughs> yeah, we got to meet one of the other vassal weapon holders. The, the rabbit, boat. The the boat vassal holder, and he's a rabbit. He's a guardian guardian similar to the Philo Queen. I totally forgot about the boat. <laughs> yeah. He's a rabbit guy, and he made a Shigigami for... Yep. Now Fume, so now he has a small raccoon now as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, in order to find Raftelia, find out Raftelia's in the same spot Glass is, so Glass is possibly captured as well. Right. Um. Yeah, now F- and Kisara realizing that now Fume and his crew are a little messed up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's one way to put it. Because <laughs> she's even like, why does it feel like I'm breaking and entering all the time? And just the two, and when they're on the roof, she's just like, you could at least say question them and reset. Re- I was like, is there a difference than torture? <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I mean, it was a, it was a solid episode. Um, you know, looking forward to seeing how it's going to play out. You know what I mean? Especially with only a few episodes left. It's yes. still big sad about that one. Still big sad about that. But, you know, it is what it is. Totally forgot about the boat, though. Forgot that was a vassal weapon. Yep. Because, like, I remembered some of the vassal weapons that's, like, in this world and stuff. Because I know one in particular that I'm assuming we'll see pop up as well before the season comes to a close being the Katana. I'm assuming. They mentioned them. Okay. Yeah. I'm assuming the Katana will come into play because there's a certain character who gets that one. Spoiler alert. Um, but I've completely forgot about the boat. So that was, that kind of caught me off guard there. A little bit of a funny laugh there. Uh, about Spy Family, though, the episode we were just talking about with the nice censoring that on your. Got, to, got introduced to Yuri, her yes. brother. Solid episode here. I enjoyed it beginning to end where, you know, Lloyd, you know, Twilight sat there and it's like, he's like, why do I feel like I'm being interrogated by like some government officer or something? It was a nice touch. The opening of it was showing off the secret police division yeah. within the country and just seeing them grab this guy for being a spy or giving away documents and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. And just the first guy interrogating him and whatnot, then just Yuri comes in. Yep. All nice and the guys. Yeah, like, having a great time. I'm not going to tell you anything. She's just like, so I hear you work at City Hall. My sister works at City Hall. You might know her. And all the, just starts small talking. Yeah, and the yeah. guy very confused. He's like, I won't tell you. Throws pictures. It'd be better if you worked out. Like you just told us. <laughs> yeah. Make this a lot faster. I got places to be. And then the, the guy who's writing notes like, you're withholding evidence? <laughs> what are you? What is happening? <laughs> Why are you like this? It's like, yeah, it just sort of slipped my mind. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I did I did really enjoy, like, the mental battle between Yuri and Twilight throughout this whole thing. What mental battle? Well, fair point. <laughs> there was no mental battle. There's the two of them having two differently conflicting objectives, not knowing it. 
and that's the, that's one of the best parts about Yuri in this in this series is like he has no idea that Lloyd is actually his arch nemesis Twilight that he's after right now. He just thinks he's his arch nemesis trying to take his sister. Exactly, away. exactly. That's one of the best parts about this. Uh, no, I mean it was a, it was an entertaining as hell episode. Like because like the interaction between those two is always just been like top tier, just because of again that that mental battle between them, where it's just like they they don't know who each other are, sort of thing. You know what I mean? Uh, also, I do want to give a special shout out because I thought this was hysterical. Um, is a uh, a buddy of mine who I have met through work. He started listening to all of our podcasts. Okay, uh, shout out to you, Steve. And you know he hasn't watched Spy Family, right? And he told me the other day when I saw him that you know listening to us talk about Spy Family and stuff, you know he you know he he didn't know the characters, you know he didn't you know hasn't watched the show, but he's just like. I know everyone's like like freaking out about some girl from Spy Family. He's just like, it's not that little girl, is it? I'm like, yeah, it is. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it is. (laughs) Ah, shit. Yeah, he's like, once I he's like, once he realized that, he was just like, god damn. (laughs) It's funny you should say that. Just sort of slightly off topic. I was talking to a coworker the other day about uh, D and D stuff. Okay. And he was telling me, he's like, yeah, I tried to find a D&D group. I went to a, a local li- to a library, and there was a group there running, and I tried to join them, but, I mean, it just got weird for me. I was like, why? What happened? He's like, well, I get there, and they start talking about shipping amongst, like, my hero characters, and I just started laughing. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yep, that, <laughs> I, I explained it, I was like, I was just like, Pedro, man, that's what a buddy of mine calls super nerds. He always says, we're nerds. Yes. yes. We're, but we don't go like hard cringe or at least try not to. <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm telling you, that that's how that's how we are, okay? We're nerds, but we're not like the super cringe nerds. There is a massive difference. There, there really is, dude. Oh, and speaking of that, that reminds me of, you know, where that, where, where that term came from, the game exchange thing I was yeah. telling you about. So for anyone listening, anytime I go to game exchange, me personally, it's either one of two people are in the store with me, super sketchy people or like super hyper cringe nerds. There's never an in-between. John had the same thing happen to him the other day. Ooh. Yeah, but with super sketchy people. <laughs> <laughs> there was a dude in there trying to sell off some stuff, and the game exchange like immediately found like bug residue on one of them. Ooh. So they immediately turned down the whole lot. It's yeah. like, you know, can't take any of it. He's like, but that's the only thing with bug residue. It's like, doesn't matter. Store policy can't take of it. John's just like, this dude was about to fucking throw hands with these guys at game exchange. I'm telling you, when you go to game exchange, it's one of two things. It's hyper cringe nerds. Or it's really sketchy people trying to make a quick buck for cigarettes. It's it's, funny. it's one of the two. It's one of the two, man. Uh, what, what's going on in your uh, skeleton out into the world? What's going on over there? So in this week's episode, they they were so they started the plan to rescue all the beast people that are being kept in the slave market, and it continues from that, picking up where the girls actually invade the black market fortress. They're attacking the other groups and ninjas across this city. Uh, hitting all the other ones and everything. And more or less, it's just a large escape. They have some fight encounters inside. <clears throat> Ark and Goemon dig themselves out of the rubble they cause, and just like, okay, let's go continue just fucking shit up. Mm-hmm. Um, the girls manage to rescue everyone and whatnot. They find a... Um, <clears throat> meet back up with Ark and Goemon. There's another building off to the side, and they go to that one. Goemon being a man is just like... You go, I'll stay here and deal with the reinforcements, yada, yada, yada. Um, the prince that was involved in all this slave trade and stuff, it seemed it's like he gives the okay, go send royal guard reinforcements to go back up and defend the trade. They get to the other place, they're rescuing more beast people. They find a cell, which is just the bodies of all the killed beast people just because they couldn't sell them for one reason or another, they're the sick or whatnot. They just killed them and piled them up in one cell and just right. covered them with a cloth and had that moment, which was really odd because of just how dark that some series get nowadays because it was, it was having this whole built dramatic moment of this is awful and things like that. And I get it, but at the same time, I was just it wasn't actually showing it or anything. Mm-hmm. So it's like you saw the bugs and stuff wanted, so it sort of implies they were dead, but then it also had all the other ensla- enslaved characters sort of like, sort of just looking away and they made it all female and whatnot. I was just like, where at the moment I was just like, okay, I get something bad here, but what did they do? Did they abuse them? Did they kill them? They, 
do awful other awful things like i'm trying to figure out what here i get that it's awful but i'm trying to actually figure out what we're building up here right right and eventually uh just that they killed him because they were sick or whatever and just gonna be sold all that fun stuff um so yeah they do the big escape going on and arc have their one last moment where arc comes back and it's just like all right mess up all these guards um I mean, that was a big thing of it. I mean, the only other thing that really came out of this episode was apparently the politics is... So the second prince, which was involved with the black trade stuff and was apparently allying himself with another kingdom, his brother, his first brother, killed him during this. He got his retainer to kill his brother and just offed him and then left a necklace that was stolen off the princess that Ark saved in a couple episodes ago. Framing him for also killing the princess. He declared that the princess is dead. He's the sole heir to the throne now. Mm-hmm. Princess gets to where she was going, meets her sister, who was apparently married off to that kingdom for alliance reasons, and um, more or less states like, her sister's like, oh, I'm glad you're alive. I didn't know what to think when I heard he killed you. And she's like, <clears throat> killed me? What? She explains everything. She's like, well, this is great. We can now just reveal that you are alive. And she's just like, no, let's keep it a secret. It allows me to do what I need to do. If brother believes he's safe and everything, he won't try and advocate for the throne as quickly as either, whether that means just pushing their father to make him the new king or offing their father or whatever. Mm -hmm. And sort of ends on that. Then Ark and Elf Girl continue their journey. They find out information from the Beast people from helping them that the kidnapped saves, slave, kidnapped elf slaves have gone to a third kingdom, an empire, holy empire, uh, which they're going to go to and see where that leads them. Okay, okay. And now it's time. Where did uh, where did Meme Quest take you this week? All right, so... Do I need to, to hit the button? I mean, not really. Okay. I mean, so we go back to our two guys who are throwing hands for their friends. Okay. Um... Yeah, no, him him came back because he couldn't die until he threw hands with Hunkel. Okay, respect Hunkel, that. Hunkel couldn't go down because he realized he was still not doing Avon's teachings and doing everything he can. Okay, okay. So he stands back up, which naturally leads to um, him just being, ha, you're not done, I respect that. Throws Hunkel's spear back to him and is like, all right, ready for the next round. Hunkel catches it and just like, no. This is not how we're going to do it. Throws the spear away, strips off his armor, so naturally he's shirtless again in a battle. <laughs> uh, I don't think there's been a single battle where he doesn't end up shirtless. So it's like a Dragon Ball thing. It's like a gray thing. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> it just happens. Um, gray, when you take off your clothes? What? <laughs> it doesn't matter what the fight is. Naturally, Hunkel just loses his armor, and he's just always shirtless. Um, he charges up his aura and he's just like, I'm only, I only got this one fist. I'm going to hit you. And then Pawn being like, I respect that. I'm going to use my aura fist as well on you. <laughs> Whoever hits first will win. They have a nice little build up and Hunkul having a moment. like, you reminded me of the other person who gave me that spear. Poor guy way back when, when they were fighting Dai's father who got off by Hunkul as well. Okay. Um, I don't remember the guy's name, but he was a big turning moment for Hunkel. Um So yeah, they stare off for a moment. They have this both internal monologues, and then finally they dash at each other, naturally being what this series is. It starts with him going, ah, it looks like I wit. I've won this, and then him going, <laughs> shit. <laughs> falling over and Hunkel naturally his fist for whatever reason didn't touch Hunkel Hunkel says something he's like you didn't hit me because yada 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 mm-hmm. and it's just like and Pond's just like ah oh. well this was a worthy fight kill me Hunkel Hunkel's just like nah we're not doing that we're now we've now fought each other plenty of times and you need to live on for the others not just die and picks up him and she's like let's go so him's now just a bro, apparently. Okay, okay. Uh, after, bro power. After he got promoted, since he was a pawn piece, mm-hmm. and now he's 
it has a whole reference to Chester being like, pawns, when they reach the end, can become any piece, as, even as powerful as the queen. Him getting Handlar's hair is sort of representing that. I was like, okay, cool, fuck off. <laughs> um, <laughs> and all that. And those two start to walk away when suddenly more chess pieces suddenly appear in front of them. Of the, so they're the chess piece nice. Apparently, King Varn made more of them. And now it's just a bunch of him's uh, friends lookalikes here standing before them as Hume Cool and him just go to face off and Hume Cool being like, ah, shit, him being like, no, I need to do this. After having a hole in himself again, I'm just like, kill me, edgelords. <laughs> <laughs> um, then we finally go back inside, die, pop, and mammoth healed up. They're like, all right, Avon and the princess have been gone a while. We should go look for them. And it's like, no, it's really quiet. And naturally, Mr. Vernon appears like, you're right, Bob. It is quiet, which means that there's someone very strong here to defend. And it's like, oh, no, it's Mr. Vern. And it sets up a hole for them to fight Mr. Vern. I'm just like, hey, cool. <laughs> <laughs> one day this will be over. One, one day. <laughs> Probably not this year. Nope. Yo, this will this will carry you into 2023. If it really does, <laughs> I think it will. <laughs> we'll be talking about this for two years on the podcast, or at least I would have <laughs> since episode three it or it, episode four. It has its moments, but I'm like, damn, the dedication, bro. I still think my favorite moment was when Hunkel came to steal the show from Pop. <laughs> <laughs> I really want that to sink in for listeners that we are on episode 75. And we've been talking about Dragon Quest since episode, like, four. Three. Because three is when you first came on, but I don't know if we talked about Dragon Quest. Two then. is when I first came on. No, I think it was three. Me and Josh did two episodes. Okay, maybe you're right. Yeah, and then Josh had had it, something a pretty bad pop up, and he couldn't do the episodes. That's when you came on for three. So basically starting episode four, okay, I think. Okay, yeah. Because four, because I know three, like, you know, since you, know, you were just getting on the show, I knew a natural default that we could do is talk about god of high school it just yeah. it just ended whatever so yeah, like episode four to now dragon quest on anime plus every week <laughs> this poor bastard <laughs> it's my fault <laughs> it's my fault i never took it off the script yep <laughs> if i would have taken it off the script like maybe like eight ten episodes in would you have stopped yeah i'm so sorry <laughs> <laughs> i'm so sorry <laughs> that's on me <laughs> Did you guys have anything else for it? No, not really. All right. So, Tomodachi game? Yeah, Tomodachi game. This was a really good episode. Caught it. Yeah, you did. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, this was a very, very good episode. This is probably my, this, I'll go ahead and say it, say it now, do a little bit of a spoiler. This is probably my favorite episode of the week. This is probably my episode of the week. That or summertime. I mean, this was a really good episode. Yeah. Because, like, the main thing about this episode is that we finally kind of get to, Really see in the brain of Yuchi right now and see about what his plan exactly is and just how far he will go, you know, which, which even includes, you know, pushing that girl off a fucking mountain. Yeah. Uh, but no, breaking down kind of his plan, like he, you see throughout the episode, it's just like, you know, he's still at the camp. You see where everything that they said to Tenji. It's totally true in mm -hmm. terms of what they told him, of course, where yes. it's like, you know, Yuchi told them that, oh, yeah, I want to punish Tenji. You know, oh, fuck him. He tried to destroy our friendship, you know, and get in the second round. Everything they said to Tenji on the phone was 100% true in terms of what they were told, of course. And what they knew. Yeah, exactly. You know, Yuchi set all of that up, you know, to basically kind of gain their trust over these couple days to an extent. You know, I'm not going to say gain their trust, well, but you know what I mean. Not, yeah, I mean. He, not, not, not gain their trust, no. He, he really didn't do it to gain their trust. No, no. I mean, because Yuji's over here doing big, big brain yeah, over here. Yeah, he's playing. Which is why I'm constantly looking for red herrings now on this bullshit. Yeah, he's playing some 8D chess over here. Because, like, the whole, the episode starts with, where it ended the last episode of him saying, let me switch sides. Yep. And it starts right up from there and then being like, you want to switch sides? Then it goes into the whole thing. It didn't show us like, if you switch sides, you can actually only switch sides once, which it never specified. So once you switch sides, you can no longer go back. And it goes through a whole thing of them, of him sitting there. like, let me switch sides. And he can switch sides as long as one person agrees to let him switch. doesn't matter who, just one person needs to agree. Well, this team is so tight, tight, tight circle. Yeah. That this captain, who's their hider, one of them's like, 
well, let's let's call the captain. We got to call the captain and everything. And Yuchi's just sitting here going, you really got to call the captain? You guys can't make a decision on your own? I was like, oh, do you, is that what this is? Y'all got to ask the captain for doing it? Hey, captain, do we go left or right? Hey, captain, hey, can I go take a pee-pee or yeah. a poo-poo or whatever he said? He said, yeah. I, want, I want to stress, he said that exactly, like pee-pee yeah. or poo-poo. I'm not just saying that for myself here. And everything and whatnot. <laughs> just probing him and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. And the one who wanted to call the captain eventually calls the captain. And the captain's just like, no, nah, don't let him join. I won't let him join. And if I does, he has to, the girl has to join too. And all then then it goes into his big brain. Well, it doesn't go into his big brain. Yeah. It goes to the kid explaining. He's like, well, this is probably what he's thinking. Gotta, and just, just stringing along of what's going on and just the thought process of him going, well, if he's wanting to join, he's just wanting to butter y'all up so y'all bring him to me so he can then call a girl to come find me. He's just like, yeah, he'll get a bigger dad, but they'll win. He's like he's sacrificing himself, yada, yada, yada. And more or less what Yuchi's just doing this because the Vinci's just like, well, how about that? If you both of you join this fine, and it's just like, no, after seeing y'all guys be like this, this is going to be an easy win. Yeah, it's like, we got this. No big deal. Um, and it's literally just his big brain play because he's just been poking them this entire time just to get a feel for how each of them sit personality-wise. Yes. And what their overall relationship <clears throat> and everything is to the point where he about freaking... Gets the hot-headed one just to reveal everything in the yep. morning because two of them go off to get the cabin and his food. Yuchi and uh, the other two are watching. One's watching Yuchi. The other one's going to watch the girl because I guess they decide because she's female. She sleeps off in the forest by herself for some fucking yeah, reason. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I was just like, okay, cool. Um, and Yuchi's just talking to the dude just going, real passionate guy. Yeah, it's like you guys are you guys are a really good team, I imagine. Right? Yeah, and just saying all this stuff till the other guy shows up to just to move out of the way and just go ahead. No, let's switch. This guy's getting you to talk way too much. Yep. Only for dude to go like, okay, okay, fine, whatever it goes. And he's like, oh no, the girl's gone, running in the forest. And as soon as that happened, I was like, here we go. I called this shit. <laughs> he naturally runs into her. With a wet cloth, trying to clean herself. So she's, I think she's actually topless too, because she's like completely nude. I think it's like for like panties on. Yeah. I think is what he walks in on her. And he just freaks out. He's like, ah, ends up crawling all the way back to the main camp. And the dude just being, what's happening? And I do want to stress this. I don't know how much time passed, but damn, that girl can dress fast. That's true. Because, like, as soon as that <laughs> moment happens, Yuchi's just like, I got it! And, that, and just shows her running fully clothed again. Yes. And also with that, you know, we kind of got, like, some little tidbits of, like, Yuchi and, and her name is Maria. Yuchi and Maria, like, kind of talking, whatever. Or, yeah, air quotes, Maria. You know, since she, she's working for the, the game runners, whatever. You know, you got some moments between her and him where it's like kind of teasing his plan and stuff like that, yeah. you know, but not giving you too much of details. You get more as the episode goes on. And, you know, like uh, one of the, like, the kind of teases is like, you know, uh, you know, that he's looking for something in particular, yes. you know, and he's going to basically kind of yell, I've got it when I found it, you know, which whenever he does, it's uh, he just gets a backpack and starts running. But it's just like, what did he find? You know, we as the viewer don't know yet. You know, it's just like he found something. So they're all, you know, running together. The, you know, the hot headed dude and the guy that tries to keep the hot headed dude kind of reined in or following him, whatever. The one thing before finishing this train of, thought, train of thought was one of the things during their interactions between Yuchi and Maria is that he more or less goes to her, like, I'll tell you the plan. But you gotta give me absolute obedience. Yes. And she's over here fangirling the entire time in her head, like, oh. is, is he threatening me? He's like, does he really think he's threatening me? And he's just all this thing. Cause she's like, he's really evil bastard. And everything. She, I mean, she's acting innocent, playing her character with this entire time in her head. She's she's like really getting into this. And she's like, oh, this is getting interesting. I like, guess, like, dude, that is so true because she's totally on board with this plan. Like yes. in every regard, she's like, oh, this is getting so interesting. I was like, oh. So, you know, in this moment of when they're kind of running away, that's when he that's when he you you know, Yuchi pushes her off a fucking mountain, like I already kind of yeah, he pushes her off a cliff. Yeah, and she's just like, what? And then there's the moment where she's like, is this what he meant when he said I would be a distraction? Yeah, because, <laughs> because it flips back to that after that happens. It goes to him, can still talk to her, going, like, I'm going to need you for the distraction. He doesn't clarify what. He yes. just says distraction. Yes. And he, when they're running around trying to escape the two, they run back into each other. like, this way. And everything. And um, 
Honestly, that actually caught me slightly off guard because, I mean, it was in the back of my head slightly, but what I was actually thinking was going to happen is what, for, for whatever reason, I don't know why, that, that bag he had, he was actually going to, he was actually running above the cliff where Tenji was and was just going to slide the bag off as of like falling or something. Right, right. But then I was like, well, that wouldn't work because Tenji can't move. And then right when I was thinking that, he pushed her. I was like, that though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because like right after he pushes her, it immediately cuts to like, you know, uh, Yuchi with Tenji again, giving him yeah, water. It goes and back food. To, yeah, it goes back to Tenji being just like, I really need to push this button. And then him yep. just having a moment to go, what's the point? If I do, nothing's going to change. He just drops it. And as he's fading, he just feels a trickle of water. And he's just here, Tenji, Tenji. He's like, huh? And he's just like, Yuji, you came for me. You're not an illusion. And then it goes <laughs> in the whole thing of, I also want to note, apparently water and food's the best damn thing in the world because it goes from skin and bones to normal. Looking <laughs> fine as fuck. <laughs> Just completely normal. Like, um, I noticed that, too, and I'm just like, I know it's an anime, but come on, guys. Like, really? He'd still be looking a little rough. Yeah, come on, but, come on. Um, now, now, this is when we actually get Yuchi's plan in full yes. detail, where the thing that he was looking for when he yelled, I found it, is that he was trying to find the kindest one of the group, which was the hot-headed one. Yes. You know, that, and, you know, trying to exploit that and use that. And he even talked about pushing her off the cliff, that it was a calculated risk because he knew they would try to save him because they're called, you know, like, you got the kindest one. Yeah. You got, like, the pervert one who's always trying to chase girls. And well, you have that pervert one who tries to, you know, can't really say no to the kind one. They well, look he, out for he each didn't other. really say pervert. He said the one who likes to put on a face. That's not, true. Not, not He would... It was the hot-headed one that called him a playboy pervert. No, what UJ said is he's the one that uh, puts on a face and he sort of fakes it and he can't really go against whenever he sees someone who's actually um, forward and passionate about stuff. Right, right. And that's why he couldn't say no to him and everything. And just, it was, it was a funny interaction when Yuji was telling this to Tenji because even when he told Tenji he pushed the girl off the cliff, he's just like, the fuck, man? Yeah, he's just like, wow, <laughs> really? Damn, bro. <laughs> and I mean, it goes in this whole him explaining he's figured out their sort. He's been probing them these last three days, trying to get, trying to figure out how he can wedge in between them and all this fun stuff. And destroy their friendship. Yeah. Which, it is his plan. Yeah. And he even goes to be like, so now that this has bought us a couple more days, and this time now it's my specialty. I'm going to break them. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I'm going to break their relationship and everything. So, yeah. And he gets that nice big old smile on his face. So That sick, to me, <laughs> twisted smile. Yeah. But we do have one, at least one slight bonding moment when he says, like, this is also a test for you, Tenji. It's like, I've decided myself if you gave up, oh, well, we lose. But if not, I begin to trust you again. And it's like that. That is true. And he's like, at least the Tenji who was at school wasn't completely fake. It's like just because I trust you again, I still not hundred percent gonna believe you on this so Sawaga girl. Yeah, yeah. And it's just like we'll get back once we get out of here. We'll see where that's going. Yeah, and it was a nice little moment because even Tenji, what you know, said something along the lines of, you know basically losing something that was going to be so hard to get back, and he's starting to kind of get it back, being the trust. Uh, so that was a nice little moment. And, you know, with this, how this episode ended is, again, on point with Yuchi's plan of trying to break their, their friendship with the girl playing her part and yes. trying to kind of get him to where, you know, even though the hot-headed one is the one that tried to save her first and the other guy was going to totally fucking leave, you know, she immediately goes to the guy that was going to leave. like, oh, you saved my life. And, like, and she's it's like, such... she's thinking, this is getting so interesting. <laughs> <laughs> like, she's going around the part. She's touching his hand. She's like, oh, thank you. And he's super confused, like, what? Yeah, and even the hot-headed guy's like, but I'm the one that, I'm the one that saved you. I'm the one that stopped. <laughs> like, and, just, and I was just, as soon as it happened, I was like, caught it. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> I was just like, because even in the moment when he's talking, he's telling Maria, Maria all this, she's like, oh, that's why you asked if I was a girl and all that yep, stuff. Yep. I was, and it's just like, call this shit. Yeah. And the episode ended with the hot-headed one and him getting in a fight and him wanting to join you. Well, that group. was the preview for next episode. I'm pretty sure that was just the end of the episode. That was the preview of the episode. Was it? Of next episode, yeah. I don't think I got to the preview. I think this was the end of the episode. No, that was the preview. 
I don't think it was the preview. It was the preview. I don't think it was the preview. I think it was just the end of the episode. You're a fucking idiot. <laughs> I think it was just the end of the episode. Because there was dialogue. There's not like actual, there's not dialogue in previews. I mean, there is in some. There's none in this? I'm pretty sure this is the end of the episode, okay. man. I'm telling you. I'm pretty sure it was the end of the episode. Which is just, you know, again, him trying to join Yuchi's group. Yeah, so, group C. Yeah. Favorite episode of the week? Mine is probably Tomodachi Game. I really mm. enjoyed this episode. This episode was solid. Yeah, Tomodachi Game. Okay. Right on, right on. All right, let's hit uh, some good old chapter ratings here for the week. Let's scroll on down here, see what we've got going on here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, one Piece, uh, 1,050. Uh, I'd probably give it a seven. I mean, it's it, we're, we're in that wrap-up period. Although I have not seen Kaido on his back like this. Splayed out. <laughs> Haven't seen that. But everything seems to be in our wrap-up period. But so that, that's kind of just where we're at, at on things right now. Uh, My Hero Academia, 354. I'll give it a seven. I'll give it a seven as well. Those characters that popped in at the end, I felt very random. Well, one of them. Yeah, one hasn't never got really much of a spotlight ever. Yeah, so I was just like, oh, hey, you're, you're a character. What's up? <laughs> uh, let's see. JJK 186. Still haven't caught up. I, I've, I'm losing so much interest right now. I think it was a seven. Think. Okay. Well, that's not promising. I mean, the direction this series is going is just so weird. Okay, fair enough. I, I can definitely agree to that. It's it's an experience. It's one way to put it. Uh, Mission is core family one thirty one. Um, what you just said is kind of how I feel here. Okay, <laughs> the direction of this series is kind of weird right now. Okay, but in a, in a good way. In a good way. Uh, I'd probably give it um, probably an eight. I'd probably give it an eight. Uh, Undead Unluck chapter one twelve. Uh, I'd give this one a seven. Uh, Mashal 109 did catch back up on this. Looks like shit's about to start happening, I guess, out of it's happening. It just just cause, just so it can happen. I give it an eight just because of the, hey, remember me? I'm the guy that picks up Mash. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's like, hey, yeah, because he's talking to us, the readers. Yes. He's like, hey, everyone, you remember me? <laughs> he's just like, oh, there's a kid. I should, should I know? I should definitely, kid, why are you over here? Then we have the guy, the visionary guy who shows up and just like, I hope you brought sunglasses because I'm the brightest thing in the round. <laughs> <laughs> and just the sun cheer squad shows up and just like, oh, the divine vision here. Yeah, we're not scared anymore. Yeah. I give it eight as well. Uh, Sakamo Days, chapter 72. <laughs> this fucking show series. I give it a nine. Uh, I'll give it a nine as well. Uh, Lucy Samurai, 64. I'll give this a nine too. Yeah, I'll agree to a nine. This was solid. That ending was was low key kind of sad. That ending was low key awesome. Yeah, true. Uh, Blue box fifty four. Fuck it, Hina. I know. <laughs> I know, Hina. Hina, what are you? Oh my. I'll give it a nine. She's killing him inside. I give she it an is. Eight. Yeah, she is killing him. <laughs> uh, P six thirty four. This has gone on so much longer than I thought it was. I'll give it a seven. I mean, it's still a good series. Okay. And the ending of Aya Hashiman. Rest in pieces. Chapter 25. I give it like a probably a five. I give it a five too. It was not a good ending chapter. It was not a good ending. It, it, they didn't they they should have pulled the red hood and just said, fuck it. My series is ending. Let's break fourth walls and just have a good time. Red Hood went super meta. Hey, man, I gave, I still stand by my, my rating that Red Hood got a solid, like, 9 or 10 out of me for that ding just because of just, like, how meta it went. <laughs> I was a big fan of that. Uh, Akane Ibanashi, Chapter 15. I'll give it a 7. Uh, my Hero Vigilantes 126 that came out last week, and I forgot to read it. The grand finale of My Hero Vigilantes, and it ends in the best way possible with a shot of knuckle, knuckle duster, duster ready to <laughs> fuck someone up. And I'm just like, my man, let's go. Uh, that shot alone gives it a nine. Yeah, the knuckle duster shot at the end was enough for me. Because I think he even said, because I'm here now, or because yes. I'm, yeah. Yeah, he says all my stuff. So, yeah, I'm just like, my man Knuckle Duster is about to fuck these dudes up in a back alley, and I'm here for it. Uh, next up, uh, I guess really nothing else. Oh, no, uh, Spy Family had its extra chapter, which wasn't very long. It's the Bond and whatever, Frankie. Frankie. Yeah. What would you rate it? I mean, it was like a six. It's nothing. It's nothing. It was a six. It was both of them just failing to yeah. win women. That was that was kind of comedic, actually. Uh, Tokyo Avengers was on a break this week. Eden zero one ninety three. 
Seven? Six? Okay. Uh, I give this one a six, personally. Seven Daily Sins, Four Nights of the Apocalypse, Chapter 64. I would give this one probably an eight. I like the... I like how Tristan is like in the position of very quickly kind of reading the room and reading personalities okay. and appealing to said personalities because like, you know, how last chapter ended was with, you know, Gawain just on the ground crying and beating the ground. It's like, no, yeah. I'm, and then this chapter picks up on that where she's crying. It's like, I'm the strongest. No, I didn't lose. And Tristan basically is playing to that where he's like, yeah, you're the strongest. You didn't lose. He ran away. <laughs> you know, and then she just like gets up. She's like, yeah, that's right. I'm the strongest. And he's just like, yep, that's right. Let's go back to city. And I'm like, Tristan, man, you're good at reading the room, man. <laughs> Tristan's the fucking mother. Basically, uh, no, it was a solid chapter. Uh, I'd, yeah, I give it probably eight, maybe a nine. Uh, neither of us have caught up and got a high school still. Uh, or an ordinary 262, though, pretty solid. I'll give it an eight, I'll give it a nine personally. Uh, true beauty 208. Uh, I would give this one a nine as well. Very good past couple chapters for true beauty. Uh, week here, a 192. I I'll give it a, give nine. It a nine. Yeah, a nine. Finally get to see Gray fight again. It's been a long time. I mean, we got a good Gerard moment. Yeah. The Gray thing was just great of just him him just picking yep. up the mic. <laughs> yeah. He's just like, what school where are you guys from? Picks up the mic. Is he testing the mic? What's he doing? He just flips it. Crack! <laughs> He's like, I asked you a question. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, God damn. <laughs> oh man, that's great. Uh L Seed 171. Um, I'll give it an eight. Okay. No, I will give this a nine. Ooh. So this this series, so I gotta actually display this because okay. this is fucking great. So, so they've gone back to this academy thing that they've gone to once, and it's gone this this whole thing of, well, now the other, rest of the world sort of heard about this academy and they're looking at it, seeing what it's about. While Korea's trying to be trying to be low key, like, hey, we're just here over here. Don't fuck with us. We're low end. And stuff happens, people end up fighting and whatnot. Now Korea's sort of crept up on, like, maybe we got to worry about Korea and everything. So they finish up all that stuff. People are coming back. And uh, Sekwoo, one of the characters, one of the buddy characters of Jaiwoo, who's our main character, his sister is the leader of one of the big organizations. And uh, more or less, they return in one of the one of the top ten uh, awakened is there. He's just like, I was going to have you s- submit to us and have you be the sparring partner of my grandson. But after seeing you and seeing how strong, what about you join the family? You and my grandson get married and whatnot. Right. Makes sense. And her just sort of being, she's been known as ice queen and she's very, um, <clears throat> not analytical, but, um, uh, I can't think of the word now. She is analytical, but she's also very, a uh, business focused of whether good moves and things like that and everything. And Sekwu shows up and he's just like, Hey, what's going on? They explain the whole situation. The guy's just like, oh, the grandson's like, Oh, nice to meet you since we're soon going to be family. Sekwu not even missing a beat because Subin, Jai Wu, and uh, I forget the other guy's name at the moment are there. And he's just like, She can't get married. She's dating Jai Wu. And everyone just being like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and just Sekwu just clearly goes, I'm okay with this. <laughs> and, every, and the guy just like, and the grass is just like, how can he be any better than my grandson? My grandson's one. And then Caden just shows up and he's like, why is my apprentice any less than your, your grandson, you ass? <laughs> <laughs> and it was just a great cutoff kind of mode. It's just, I give it a nine just because the Sekwu just be like, she can't do that. She's in there. She's dating Jai Wu. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. Uh, Sub-Zero, 140. Uh, I'd give this one a 7. Uh, down to Earth, 99. I would give this one probably a 7 as well. Uh, in Reunion, Chapter 16. I'd give this one probably an 8. Very solid chapter there. Uh, favorite chapter of the week? Fucking suck Wu. <laughs> All right, fair enough. <laughs> my favorite chapter of the week, just because it's my last opportunity. To make this my favorite chapter of the week. Knuckle Duster. Shout out. <laughs> shout out to Knuckle Duster with My Hero Vigilantes. That in shot there out there alone makes this chapter a nine for me and the favorite chapter of the week. Shout out to Knuckle Duster. Fucking legend. 
appreciate you. I, I, one of my favorite moments with Knuckle Duster in this whole series was like when him and Eraser had gotten a fight out in the street, whatever. Because Eraser, like, I, I, he was Knuckle Duster was doing something, and Eraser had being a pro hero, even though it's his off time, you know, because he mostly works at night. Yeah, it was just like fuck, I got to fucking deal with this. And you know, as he starts to try to fight him, he tries to use his quirk and. Now that happens, obviously. Knuckle Duster's quirkless. And I was, you know, uh, you know, Racer is like, oh, uh, well, my bad. You're a citizen. My, my fault. And Racer is going away. He's just like, damn, for a fucking citizen, that dude fucking packs a punch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, let's go, baby. Knuckle Duster is a fucking badass. Knuckle Duster has no quirk. He just has knuckles. <laughs> yeah, that's true. He just has a single brass knuck. Yeah, and just beats the shit out of you. Just like his great defining moment in the climax where he's sitting there getting fucked up. He's like, I don't care. I'm going to still keep whooping that ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I love it. I love it. Oh, Shout out to my hero vigilante. It's been a ride. Uh all right, I guess with that said, any last thoughts on anything? Uh, I don't think so, no. Let's do it then. Let's get out of here. Like, comment, subscribe, rate, whatever the, your platform allows, it does help. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can hit subscribe and help us build that community still. And if and hit that bell and let you know when any of our videos go up. Whether it be especially with next week, with GameStead gonna be posting True. probably like or maybe five videos within True. the next week or so. True. But thank you very much. Bye. <laughs> uh, and friendly reminder, we are on a break next week because of the large amount of game static content we're about to be pumping out. Again, this is our Super Bowl season. Lots of big announcements happening right now. This episode we're recording this Saturday is, is going to be massive with State of Play, Pokemon, Sonic, Fable rumors, and more. Lots of shit to talk about. Uh, but yeah. Uh, do everything he said more. Go check us out at our website, spark3.com. You can sign up for free or sign up five bucks a month. Early access podcast episodes. Check out the merch store as well, spark3shop.com. Uh, join the Discord and link down the description below. Uh, go follow us on Twitter at Animan Podcast and stay tuned for other shows like Game Static, Terrible Football Show, Spark Bart, and Talk About Movies and stuff. Uh, with that said, that's it. Until next time, guys. See you the week after. Let's have a good. Uh, let's have a good month. A good month for gamers. Let's have a good month. See you guys.